everybody here back to the Martin Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in the middle of Manhattan in Midtown. It's at 12 o'clock and a beautiful sunny day and the first uh, bulbs are seen outside at the trees and the flowers are, are coming out. So I think we might have a cold um, winter behind us. It's the first uh, Siegel Talk um, we have here um, this season in the spring, we're starting our programs, go and have a look at our websites. And today we have um, a conversation um, with a playwright mm -hmm. from Spain, from Madrid, Paco Becerra. Paco, thank you for joining us. And um, also his translator, Anton Pujol, who is based in uh, uh, North Carolina in Charlotte. And um, we will talk about the work um, of um, Paco uh, in general, but also about the work that's currently being shown at Tone uh, Page here uh, in New York City, The Little Pony, um, who was translated by my late colleague, Marion Peter Holt. And um, and so we will um, learn a little bit more about contemporary theater in Spain, uh, the Siegel Center Bridges Academia and professional theater, international and American theater. And this is one of the many things we do where we listen, we give a forum to, to playwrights who um, are uh, really of significance, but uh, as we learned, have never been shown um, in the US and his plays have been done in 10, 12 uh, different countries. So it's a big honor to have uh, you with us, Paco. Where are you at the moment and what time is it? Uh, now is five in the, in, the, in the evening and I am in Almeria, the south of Spain. Almeria, in front of the sea. Uh, okay. Do you live there, or you're working there now, or? Uh, now I, I am at at my parents' house. They live in the mm -hmm. in the south in Andalusia. Andalusia is the is a is a place of Spain. It's a part of Spain, the the south. And um, I'm not. Ha I I have not house my own house um, now, because I. I travel a lot and I live I live my my old house and now I am a little bit a uh, nomad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, really thank you thank you for taking the time um to to join us um and with us we have also um Paco's translator for the the latest edition, also, I think, the cutting edge Spanish theater today, Anton Pujol. Anton, um, <clears throat> where are you now? And I'm in my office at the uh, University of North yeah. Carolina, Charlotte. Charlotte. So um, you are now um, the translator, the late Marion Peter Hall translated mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, some of the work, especially the one, The Little Pony. But um, um, so... Um, Let's go back to Paco. Paco, um, how did you get started to work in theater and for theater? Was it in the town where you're in now? Is that your old room where you wrote the first plays? Well, uh, I, I was born here, yes, but my my first place, I think, uh, I I uh, I wrote my first um, professional play in two thousand three. Uh, 20 years ago. And you already were in Madrid. Tell us a little bit, um, how, how did your artistic career develop? How did you get started in theater? I started in theater uh, by the litera literature. Because uh, at the first, I be be become to, to, to write theater and uh, winning um, several prizes. Mm -hmm. Is the so way. you started as poetry and now as a novelist before you wrote theater? No, 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 never. I only write theater. I've ne I never wrote a novel and neither poetry. The I only so write theater. So you went to a drama school or theater school in Spain or um, uh, did you study it? How did that happen? Uh, when I was uh, nine. 19 uh, 19 um i traveled to i traveled to to madrid to study in a, a, a private academy of uh acting and then 
uh, I start to study um, dramaturgia is the dramaturgy uh, four years of in a in a public school uh, I I study uh, uh, to to write theater. Why do you write? Why did you decide to become a writer, not an actor or a painter or a poet? Um, don't know. It's a mystery. Don't know. I don't know. I I I I really don't know. Uh, I've never read read too much. Um, I don't know why why I choose uh, writing and not uh, acting and or directing. I've never, I've never, um, um, how, how do you say, Anton, nunca dirigí ninguna de mis obras de teatro? Uh, he never directed any of his plays. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what were your first plays about? Uh, the name is Venta Quemada. Um, y es de una chica que llega a un pueblo, a uh, una chica que no habla durante toda la función. And it's a girl that arrives to a town and she never speaks one word. Sí, yo leí una... Um, uh, estaba descubriendo Alfred Hitchcock. Y He was había, discovering Alfred Hitchcock. And I had visto that Psychosis era la, había, había hecho una película donde la protagonista moría a los, a los 20 primeros minutos de empezar la película. Uh, uh, in Psycho, there was... Uh, the character dies in the first 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Y pensé, bueno, nunca lo había, nunca había oído algo así, y pensé que era... That was original. Me impactó. He was very surprised by it. Y pensé que si era posible escribir una obra o una película donde ahora directamente la, la protagonista no apareciese. No es que muriese and, a los 20 minutos, sino que no apareciese nunca en la función. And he wanted to write a play where the main character did not only not appear, uh, not talk, not nothing. Y esa es la primera obra que escribir, una obra donde la protagonista no existe. No está. And that's the first play, a play where the main character does not exist. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, so you are a Spanish player, a European playwright. Um, um, growing up in Andalusia, Andalusia, does that, did that inform you? Uh, what's the world you write about? Or was it a Madrid play? How did it, um, how... What worlds are you writing about? What are you interested in? Eh, normalmente yo me he dado cuenta con el tiempo eh, que escribo... It's come to realize. Escribo en dos escenarios, que son los escenarios donde he vivido. Hay obras donde suceden en un escenario rural, como Venta Quemada. He writes on the rural stage, let's call it this way. Y luego, los, los, y luego hay otras obras. La mitad de las obras suceden en un escenario rural y la otra mitad sucede en un escenario cosmopolita que tiene que ver con mis otros 20 años o 30 casi que he vivido en Madrid. And then um, the other part of his, of his plays um, on a cosmopolitan stage that's, it reflects his 20, 30 years that he's lived in Madrid. Al final es un reflejo de mi vida porque me paso, me paso la vida It yendo de... Life. De lo rural a la, a la gran capital y de la gran capital otra vez al pueblo. He goes from the countryside to the to the to Madrid to the urban, back to the rural. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about a play you won a Spanish a theater award for. I die, I die not. I think in twenty uh, one, and then it was banned right away. Tell us a little bit what happened. Pues. Um... Un grupo de políticos entró e intervino la programación de un teatro. Um, there's a public theater and a group of politicians um, decided to they decided to make a choice. Sí, retirar de la programación oficial y dos días antes de que sacaran la programación oficial. And before eh, the public announcement of the new season, they decided to cancel his play. Luego me prometieron que me reubicaban en el siguiente año. Then they promised him that the following season he would be um, he would be part of the season. Pero la directora me llamó y dijo que sus jefes políticos no querían programar esa obra nunca. The director called him, the director of the theater, saying that the politicians she was um, serving told him that they would never allow this play to go on. Hmm. Um, Anton, you translated the play. Tell us yes. a little bit what it's about. 
Um, Santa Teresa, I think um, I die for I die not. I think it's one of his greatest plays. It's it deals a lot with what um, being Spanish means. Santa Teresa is a historical character, and in the play, it starts with what I call the cyborg Santa Santa Teresa. That she kind of her body was completely cut in pieces, and it was taken to different parts of the world, and she starts recomposing herself. Uh, and as then, a saint, like she was like a saint yeah. cut up. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she was a very problematic saint. She was somebody who was very um, honest, completely open about her ideas, um, com um, absolutely criticizing the church, this, the Inquisition, um, a really gutsy character for the, the times. And the play starts and she recomposes herself and she realizes it's um, the 21st century in Madrid. She realizes what the politicians have done with Santa Teresa, um, which has nothing to do with her values. And then the whole, the whole play starts. And for a lot of people, and that's why it was canceled, people, because she takes drugs, she's a homeless, she becomes a prostitute. But for a woman, uh, for a woman without any means, that's probably her only solution. So that's about it. Hmm. So um, it had a very a strong reaction, which means the theater means something. Um, uh, we had Indian playwright Abu Jack Majumba here um, on some of our programs, and also his plays once in a while gets banned, and he says he he often wonders if theater makes a difference, if it's important or not. And he says so much happens on TV and television, nothing gets centered. My, my plays get centered because they mean something and they're important and they change the world. Um, what did it mean to you, um, Paco, to learn that your play was centered, censored in a way by a progressive, I guess this is a progressive theater. How, how did you react? ¿Cómo reaccioné? Pregunta, Anton. Mm -hmm. Cuando me sucedió esto, bueno, pues... Cuando te cancelaron. Pues reaccioné con mucho asombro, va a hacer dos años. I was very surprised. It happened eh, to Porque en toda la historia de la democracia no había habido muchos casos, por no decir casi ninguno, de una censura uh, teatral. In the history of um, the transition democracy since 1975, there had never been one censorship case. Entonces, eh, mi caso fue, el, yo no lo sabía, pero en ese momento era, fue un caso aislado. It was an isolated case, the first case. La sorpresa fue cuando meses después del mío ha habido una oleada de censura. De However, una, no de una obra this... ni de dos, sino hasta de 14 y 15 obras mm -hmm. que han censurado la, la extrema derecha, los, los, los partidos más conservadores. After his case, there's been a huge wave of cancellations and censorship, more than 15 plays, and a lot of issues are happening because of the extreme right, Vox. That's a political party called Vox. Así que, por un lado, um, me, o sea, por un lado, me produjo mucho desasosiego que sucediera esto, pero por otro, por otro lado, me dio un poco de calma, porque todas aquellas personas que podían de alguna manera pensar que mi caso era un caso aislado, que yo estaba mintiendo, toda esta oleada de censuras vino a corroborar que ese caso mío no fue sino el primero de una ola censora que, iba, que estaba por venir. And then he was kind of relieved because since so many censorship cases came to fruition, he kind of felt, he kind of felt relieved because he was not the only case. And he was not picking things up. Was there an outcry from the theater community or... Um... Te ha preguntado si hubo, si la comunidad teatral te apoyó, si se quejó mucho la comunidad teatral. Bueno, eh, no mucho, hubo un poco really. de... Han habido muchísimo... Fue un, fue, ha sido un caso muy mm, polémico también para la gente del teatro porque quizá... Es muy controversial. Porque quizá mi grito y mi protesta ha evidenciado el silencio de muchas personas que en principio tendrían que haber hablado y como no han hablado, pues al final... Eh, I, mi grito ha evidenciado su silencio. Um, since a lot of people that should have talked never talked, never came to his support, 
I mean, that that put the the whole uh the, theatrical community um and we kind of unveiled the theatrical community. Mm -hmm. Sí, hubieron voces como la de Pedro Almodóvar o Javier Bardem. Pedro Almodóvar o Javier Bardem came to his support. Y que firmaron un manifiesto y que apoyaron la causa públicamente, sí. It was a manifest and they came in favor, but not too many, pero no muchos. No muchos. Not, not too many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it is it is a, a dis disturbing um, a sign. I think in New York, we also at once saw the play, I think it was called Holy Shit by Inigo Ramirez, if I remember right, where people got attacked on stage, uh, also by the religious right wing, there were even bloody noses. But as far as uh, I remember, it was continued. It was not, uh, it was not um, censored. It was not uh, taken off um, from um, the stages. Is something changing in the Spanish um, um, cultural scene, in the theater scene? Sí, algo está cambiando porque hace muy pocos años entró un partido, por primera vez entró un partido de ultraderecha uh, en el poder y está, y, y, y está en muchas concejalías de cultura. Yes, some um, things are changing because we have a new extreme right party in, in many of the cities around and they have a lot of power and they're getting more powerful. De hecho, uno de esas, una de, el diputado de cultura de este eh, partido um, de ultra eh, fue el que en la Asamblea de Madrid tachó públicamente a la obra que escribí de dañina y esperpéntica. Mm -hmm. There was a, a one of these Vox uh, parliamentary men who really criticized his play as um, esperpéntico. Es perpéntico. Es no. Um, <laughs> you know, like like being like a freak show, and it's not at all what it what it is. Y que mm -hmm. era una obra que dañaba un poco a la el, pues el, la imagen de España. And it was a play that tarnished the Spanish image. Yeah. Um, um, Paco, you're an internationally known playwright, right? Your plays have been done in, in 12 countries. Maybe uh, you know the numbers. You're disappearing. I can't hear you. Um, can you hear your default mic? Yes, well, now. No, yes. Yeah, now it works. Um, um, so is it better? So is your um Anto, where does his work fit in in the um in the uh, Spanish literary scene, theater scene? Um me pregunta donde donde encaja tu tu teatro. I think he's really a voice of his own. En el teatro español yo creo que tú eres una voz uh, muy particular. Um I think because each of his plays is kind of different from the one before. There are topics, there are themes that we can... Tell us some of the plays. Tell us, and very shortly, what they are about. The well, name the first, of... uh, Venta Quemada, Dentro de la Tierra, which deals with, which is a great play. I think it's one of his masterpieces. And it deals with the rural world where there's something happening. There's a lot of immigration problems. Immigration problems appear... Um, throughout um, problems um, about foreigners coming to Spain, there are problems with all kind of minorities. Then there's grooming also, which I think it's also a great play, which refers to grooming. And he kind of questions... Grooming in a sense of... Of grooming, of somebody who goes and pretends to be somebody else to catch you know, a minor. And I think it's a very interesting play. And he really puts, he really questions um, a lot of our behaviors. He questions what society deems normal or not normal. And why do we call um, some behaviors normal and some others not? So um, then there's El Señor Ye, which deals, it's a beautiful play where you have Chinese immigrants living at the bottom of, and then some old, old Spanish women, and something happens that I'm not going to reveal, 
Then there's another play that I like, which is, ¿cómo se llama? Ahora uh, empiezan las vacaciones. ¿viste? Ahora empiezan las vacaciones, which is The Pelican by Strindberg. And he did a great adaptation and there was a beautiful production in Madrid. That's a play that has not been seen much, but I think it's another, it's an adaptation of um, The Pelican. And I think it works wonderfully. He sets it in, in modern Madrid and all those issues that Strindberg plays with, I think resonate very well into our society today. And then he's got also Edipo Rey, Medea. Fedra. Fedra, um, which he kind of looks at the old myth with a modern prism. And I also think those are very good. And I think that's it. Me he olvidado alguna. Mm -hmm. Seguro que sí. Alguna, pero está bien. Yeah. So, so he's one of the more, more visible playwrights in Spain. So this kind of censorship scandal, the theater taking a decision, an artistic decision to present a playwright and then taking it back because of political pressure, you know, which is um, um, indefensible in our eyes. You know, it's, it's shocking. Um, your plays are very successful, right? They are shown on European stages. Tell us a little bit what theaters are, where, what countries, what theaters are showing it? Anton? Um, ¿Has entendido la pregunta? Eh, sí, bueno, que, 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 que sería un éxito eso en Europa. No, no, no that, uh, que tu teatro ha tenido mucho éxito. Ah. Por toda Europa. Um, also, uh, Pequeño Pony, uh, Shanghai. Sí, o sea, en Estados Unidos creo que es la número 20, es la vigésima producción que se hace en el mundo. Esta la de Estados Unidos. Se ha... Pequeño Pony es number, uh, production number 20 all, all, all around the world. Sí, se ha hecho en Chile, se ha hecho en China. Chile, China. China, uh, uh, Italy, in England. Uh, now there will be new productions in Canada, I think. And, and yesterday... I saw for the first time the adapt the cinematographic adaptation of mm -hmm. the of the Little Pony, uh, mm -hmm. the in a in a German German production. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yes, uh, they they made a, a film uh, mm -hmm. of the of the Little Pony, and yesterday night I saw for the first time via link, mm -hmm. uh, internet link that they sent me and i think the premiere uh, there will be uh, in this year perfect fantastic that's uh, that is uh, that there is also a, a very good adaptation of grooming a movie yeah. adaptation of grooming yeah and um, yes there are there are two 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 films about uh two of my plays and i am working in the third third adaptation for for a new film And now mm. I, I I work more in in cinema than in theater because in theater after uh, after the they banned banned me how do you say mm -hmm. and, and um, banned me mm -hmm. I have I have problems uh, to 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 stay on a stage. Mm -hmm. So you is the fact that you had, don't have a home, you have now a nomadic existence. Is that related to that feeling that you have, to that experience of being censored, being banned, or not having income through theater? Or is that for you being homeless in your own country in a way? Um, is that a choice? Is it an artistic choice? Bueno, es un, es un between, it's is, is a, is a, is a middle, it's middle. And um, yo he estrenado uno de los últimos 10 años. In the last 12 years. años, estre wow. estrenado una obra cada año en, en España, en, en Madrid. He had a new play every year. Y desde el caso, desde que denuncié públicamente el caso de censura hace dos años, no he vuelto a estrenar en ningún teatro. And in, um, in two years, he hasn't done anything since the moment that he, uh, he complained about his treatment. Mm -hmm. Por el contrario, estoy estrenando mucho en el resto del mundo, fuera de España. However, outside of Spain, he's very popular. Incredible and uh, something one might expect, you know, in conservative Hungary, uh, 
in uh, Russia, you know, Iran, Iraq. But it's uh, shocking um, to realize and to hear that one of the most uh, well-known writers and most respected as writers from that country of Spain, which has such a great tradition, is one of the great world powers in a way, you know, going back to the golden age, you know, and uh, and um, that um, it treats its playwrights in, in such a fashion. And it's not um, not a good not a good sign. Paco, tell us why do you write what why for the theater if you did what what fascinates you? Why do you think it is important? Yo escribo teatro para plantear dilemas morales y hacer que los espectadores... I write theater, I write theater to, uh, to question issues. And para, so that... para plantear dilemas morales que hagan reflexionar al público y, que con, esa... that make people think. y que con esa reflexión ejerciten su juicio crítico. And that they can um, use their critical judgment. Normalmente no digo nunca a he favor de a favor de quién estoy. He never says who's in, who is he in favor of. Y lo dejo lo dejo en manos del espectador que son los que en, en este caso tendrían que juzgar si tienen que juzgar quién, es, el, quién es el qué es lo que está bien y qué es lo que está mal. Intento no aplicar la moral en absoluto nunca en nada de lo que escribo. They have to judge what's right, what's wrong, and he tries not to um, immerse himself in that. You know, it's up to the it's up to the audience. So, are you a political playwright in that sense? Eh, creo que sí, pero no. O sea, yo personalmente sí expreso so, but... personalmente sí expreso mi posición política como persona, pero no como dramaturgo. He stresses his political persona as a person, but not as a playwright. Intento no utilizar el teatro para que sea un altavoz de mis ideas. Theater is not for him to broadcast his ideas. Mm -hmm. That's that's that is a quite quite a big statement. Tell us a bit. How do you write? Do you sit um, in cafes? Do you at home? Do you have a typewriter or a computer? How is your day structured? You said I write a play every year. How do you? What is your process of writing? Eh, yo he escuchado mucho que mucha gente siempre habla de que tiene que tener un sitio para tener una disciplina, que tiene que tener un lugar ¿no? para escribir. He's always heard that some people always need to have the same place to write and they, they need to have a lot of discipline to write. Pero un día me di cuenta que mi oficina, mi despacho, es mi cabeza. He realized that his office in his home es mi cabeza. It's, uh, his, his office is his head. Entonces puedo escribir donde, allá donde yo esté. He can write anywhere where he happens to be. Así que escribo en la playa, escribo en la montaña. Write on the beach, on the mountains. Escribo en la ciudad, escribo en el pueblo. City and the town. Escribo en los aviones, escribo en on los the aeropuertos. Plane, at the, in the airports. Escribo en las discotecas porque se me ocurre yeah. algo y cojo el móvil y apunto y me voy a una esquina y tengo una idea y apunto y me pongo a escribir. Cuando... Even in a disco, he, if he has an idea, he, he grabs his his cell phone and he starts uh, jotting down all his ideas. Creo que uno de los uh, lo contrario de un inconveniente es Anton. El qué? Lo contrario de un inconveniente es un un, un, un a favor, o sea, un, un a, o sea, creo que lo positivo que tiene lo favorable o la ventaja, perdón. The creo que la creo que la Let's ventaja translate. Let's translate. Creo que la ventaja de ser dramaturgo y de ser escritor, a playwright Es justo esa, que no necesitas eh, tener ningún sitio. No, it, you just don't need a, spe a specific place. Para trabajar. To work. So you can write, you can write anywhere. So we can imagine you in a day in Madrid, you go from your home to cafes at different places, an exhibition, way to an airport, and you will always um, be writing, um, you know, almost like a painter who takes sketches all day long, whatever. Um, he sees, what are your influences? Who influenced you as a writer? Who do you look up to? Mm, bueno, eh, tengo gran influencia de los griegos, de Greek, eh, Greek playwrights, the classics. De Eurípides like, y de Sophocles. Say some names. What who, who, Eurípides. Eurípides, Sófocles. Sófocles. Creo que no hace falta nada más. Creo que los grandes clásicos trágicos. You have it all there. 
está todo, está todo el teatro, está ahí. Eh, Aristóteles recogió la poética de Aristóteles, todo lo que era necesario para all escribir. Of, all of theater is in the classics. Aristotle just um, summarized everything that we needed to know. Creo que ni siquiera hay que leer a Shakespeare para aprender a, a I think that we don't even need to read Shakespeare to understand what theater is all about if you've read the Greeks. Y ni siquiera Esquilo. Creo que leyendo a Sófocles. Creo que leyendo a Sófocles y leyendo a Eurípides. Sófocles y Eurípides. Todo lo que se escribe, lo que escribimos hoy en día, ya está ahí. Everything that we write nowadays is already in Sophocles and Euripides. Mm -hmm. So in a way, um, uh, they're adaptations and reinventions of existing stories um, you tell. Um, are you a Spanish playwright? Would you call yourself a Spanish player, a European? Um, how would you? How do you see your identity, or do you have one? Bueno, yo la primera obra de teatro que leo en mi vida es Yerma de Federico García Lorca. First play that I ever read was Yerma by Lorca. Lorca nació en Granada, yo nací en Almería, son las ciudades Lorca. que están cerca, no sé si son 100 kilómetros de donde nació Lorca, donde nací yo. Lorca was born in Granada and he was born in Almería, which are relatively close cities, both in Andalucía. Y bueno, los dos tenemos muchas cosas en común. Me, me pienso mucho en Lorca, la verdad. Quiero decir, los dos. Somos a lot about Lorca. A lot of things in common. Los dos somos personas, somos chicos homosexuales, de, que, han nacido, que hemos nacido en un pueblo rural. Born in a little town. Y que se han ido a Madrid para estudiar y Went aprender. To to study. Mm -hmm. y, 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 y finalmente han sido censurados. They've been both censored. Y bueno, eh, ahora pues también acaban de censurar en Florida la casa de Bernarda Alba, ¿no? En, And now in Florida, de Florida. They censor the house of Bernarda Alba. Creo que no es un asunto el de la censura artística español. Creo que es un caso que está ocurriendo en todo el mundo y la prueba es que justo en, en Florida pues acaban de censurar a, a Lorca ahora mismo, ¿no? Hace meses. Yeah, the, the issue of censorship is unfortunately becoming very strong, especially in Florida where they've just censored um, Bernardo Alba by Lorca. Mm -hmm. In Florida. Mm -hmm. Sí, lo han retirado de las bibliotecas. De oh, las so bibliotecas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Library. yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we see, so these are your inspirations. So um, tell us a bit about the process of translating, since we have a translator here. Um, We actually helped to produce uh, your play, The Little Pony, and we will talk about it later. And my colleague, my late colleague, Marion Peter Hold, who was a great translator, a great mediator, a bridge between uh, Spanish theater, Catalan theater, of course, especially. Um, and um, so did you, and, and we all respected him, we published books with him. Did you collaborate with him and also with Anton? Um, how, how are your collaboration when it comes to translation of your tax how do you think about it eh, yo no conocí nunca personalmente a Marion Peter Holt I never met Marion Peter Holt eh, pero sí tenía comunicación con él por internet nos escribíamos he heard emails the exchange emails y él me explicó que él solo había traducido que él era experto en traducir catalanes que solo había traducido a catalanes he was only uh, an expert in catalan authors pero que él quería, tenía el capricho de hacer una excepción con mi obra del Pequeño Pony, que nunca, lo había, pony. que nunca lo había hecho porque solo había traducido a catalanes, era su ámbito, pero él quería, tenía la ilusión de hacer esto con mi texto y me pidió que sí podía hacerlo, aunque él no era experto en traducir desde el español, sino del catalán. Even though he was not an expert in uh, translating from Spanish, but Catalan, he, he wanted to translate The Little Pony. Y yo le dije so que saw, sí. Excuse me, go on. No, y yo le dije que sí, que ok, que adelante, que lo hiciese. Permission, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, did he come and see the play? ¿Él vio la obra? Creo que nunca vio la obra. He never saw the play. Mm -hmm. But he, he read it and felt connected um, to it. Do you remember um, specific uh, translation um, um, questions you were working on, struggling with, with Peter, Marion Peter? No recuerdo que me hiciese muchas preguntas al respecto. He doesn't remember that he, that he asked him anything. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we think it's it's a very, very um, a good translation. Anton, how is it for you? You translated uh, more of his plays. You know, also have this anthology, Cutting Edge uh, Spanish Theater. Tell us a little bit, uh, what is your approach uh, when it comes to translating work that does come from a different country, from a different continent, uh, inspired often by um, um, a context that is not as well known here? For me, there was a very important thing that Paco Becerra does, the playwright, and I've always been uh, very interested in. He never he never attends rehearsals. Tu nunca vas a ensayos, poco. He doesn't really care. He says that my theater is to be read. Que el teatro es para leerlo. And that's very, very important. He doesn't care about the production. He doesn't care if it's um, who's directing it, the actors. No te importan los directores ni los actores. Um, that's not his job. His job is to write a play, to be read. And I took that in my translation um, as I hope that I do the other linguistic translation. I'm very faithful to the original. But then I hope that the dramaturg, the director, and even the actor give it their own voice especially when you're translating into English, um, any phrase, if it's spoken in New York, London, or Melbourne, it's going to sound completely different. So I would like my translation to be the, the stepping stone to create their own Becerra world. So that was my style, very, very respectful. And also, I hope that they get their own imprint you know, their own, I mean, we know how different it is when you have different actors read the same monologue or the same text, you know, so absolute liberty for the people who envision something different. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about his technique of writing or the rhythm. What makes him special? What is different from other writers you translate? But what, what makes uh, Paco Becerra uh, Paco Becerra? I think he's very real. He's very alive. He always leaves you questioning. He's not afraid. Tú no tienes miedo de nada on your place. No. He's not afraid of anything. He really takes you to the edge. And then he kind of leaves you dangling. Um, you never know who's right, who's wrong. And he just... Uh, for example, one of my favorite plays that we haven't mentioned, Lulu. Lulu starts with kind of a biblical retelling of the story of Lulu, and then it transforms into something completely different, um, completely shocking. And I think also, I've seen a couple, three productions of grooming in different countries, and I've seen um, two productions of Pequeño Pony in Madrid and in Barcelona, and they were completely different. The Barcelona production, la producción de Barcelona de Pequeño Pony era muy diferente de la de Madrid. Claro, es que yo nunca escribo, uh, nunca nombro al escenario. Yo no escribo mm. para el teatro. Yo soy escritor y escribo literatura dramática. No escribo. He teatro. writes dramatic literature. He's not a playwright. He doesn't write for the stage. Nunca hablo del escenario ni cómo tienen que hacerse las obras. Nunca hay ninguna indicación de cómo se tiene que hacer eso en la escena. There are no stage directions. There are very few. Um, descriptions of the setting. Nunca describo el escenario, no me interesa el teatro, no me, interesa, me interesa el conflicto, las ideas. Yo escribo sobre las the ideas. Conflict, the ideas. He writes about the ideas. Pero no cómo se materializan esas ideas sobre un escenario. But not how you um, visualize those ideas on a stage. And that's why I think he's so interesting. And because any of his productions will be completely different. Mm -hmm. So you come up first with a question, an idea, or a painful um, a moment in a person's life or in the history of a country, as a, as a, and then you write a play around it. How does it originate? How do you start? Sorry? ¿Cómo empieza? Yeah. ¿Cómo empieza? Cuando empiezas una obra, ¿cómo empieza oh. a pensar? Um... Eh, yo entiendo que el teatro tiene que ser peligroso. Theater has to be dangerous. Y tiene que ser transformador. It has to be transforming. 
para que sea transformador, uh, tengo, que transforming. tengo que presentar un conflicto. He's going to present a conflict. Un conflicto que el espectador se vea inmerso en él y piense qué haría él en esa situación. A conflict that drags the, the audience and makes them think, what would I do if this... Intento que ese conflicto sea lo suficientemente angustioso y problemático que haga que en el espectador... A conflict to be anguish, full, full, full of anguish, very problematic. Que haga que en el espectador se produzca una, una catarsis y una transformación. So... There's a catharsis for the audience. There's a transformation. Y que salga distinto, pensando completamente lo opuesto de cuando entró. And maybe he, they leave uh, thinking completely different from when they enter the theater. También intento que todo aquello que el espectador pensaba que le parecía horrible al principio de la obra, al and final... Everything that, and, and everything that the audience thought it was horrible before... A que al final le parezca aceptable. That maybe at the end it's acceptable. Y al revés, que todo aquello que al principio de la obra le parecía aceptable, que al final le parezca horrible. And everything that seems uh, acceptable at the beginning, it's now not acceptable. Para que al final el espectador salga más confundido de lo so, que otro. in order to confuse um, the audience even more. Creo que esa confusión es la que nos hace eh, ser grandes como seres, como seres humanos, eh, eh, crecer como seres humanos, la confusión. That confusion makes us better human beings, makes us grow. Y no todo lo contrario. Pues, huyo de las obras que vayan a darle la, la razón al espectador o que intenten crear en el espectador una sensación de seguridad y de que esté en lo cierto. He hates uh, plays that give the audience what they want to hear and that they, what they believe is true. He hates Por them. Por eso intento no dar soluciones nunca. Creo que un artista... That's why he never gives solutions. No somos políticos en ese sentido. We're, we're not politicians. En ese sentido. In that sense. Somos políticos en el sentido de hacer reflexionar a la gente sobre aspectos que tienen que ver con el tabú, con las cosas que no se pueden decir y con las que no solemos hablar. Um, they're politicians in the sense that they need to talk about things that they have not been talked about before. Creo que escribo mucho acerca de todo aquello sobre lo que nadie te va a hablar, ni en la escuela, ni, en, about things that are not talked about. En, ni en la escuela, ni en tu casa comiendo, ni en la familia, ni en la pareja. Creo they're, que el teatro... Creo que el, el teatro es el último reducto donde podemos hablar de todo aquello de lo que no podemos hablar en, en otros sitios. Is the last uh, space where you can talk about what's not allowed to talk anywhere else. Y ya incluso ni siquiera en el teatro. And not even theater anymore. <laughs> yep. That's, no, that's a very, very powerful, almost like a doctor. And the patient has something that hurts and the doctor puts his hand on it. And it hurts even more. You know, it shows where's the pain, where's the wound. Um, what is what is uh, what is sick? What's not working? So it's um, quite uh, impressive. How do you work? Do you write many um, many drafts? Uh, do you work with actors to improvise in between? Um, do you have it all in your head like a check off? You think for weeks, don't write anything, and then you write. How is your method um, of writing and rewriting? No, 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 nunca, he, nunca, he, nunca he actuado con actores, ni he probado el texto en escena, ni he hecho. He's never tried. Before. Tried out the text with the stage or with actors, never ever. Soy un escritor en el puro sentido de la palabra. He's a pure writer in the sense that he just writes. And if you have uh, the draft, is the one that comes out right away? Like you sit down for three, four weeks, or is it like a year? How long? How do you work? How do you struggle? How long do you go through the cafes and airports and discos? ¿Cuántos borradores? Ah, muchísimo. Many. Cientos. Lot. Hundreds. Give, give us a number. Uh, Hundreds. Cientos. Hundreds of drafts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one has the feeling it's a musical a composition. You know how the words and sentences play um, with each other. And, um, and now, as soon in a minute or something, we will be uh, joined by... Kimberly Ramirez, who is directing uh, The Little Pony here um, in uh, in New York City, in Marion Peter Holt's uh, translation. We did an, uh, an excerpt of the scene, and when we did a memorial evening uh, celebrating the life and work of Peter, Marion Peter Holt, 
um, and the audience was very touched even by the excerpts. We have a small festival that's called the Prelude Festival and we did a, a full reading, but just a stage reading. And again, the people in the audience uh, as well as the actors uh, felt so moved and said, this has to be done. It's shocking that this play has not been done. It's a play about um, uh, a little boy that wants to bring his knapsack, a pink knapsack with the little ponies and the unicorns in it to a school and big problem starts of harassment, but also um, between uh, the parents. We just see the mother and father talking in the living room over a couple of evenings, um, um, discussing um, um, how the, uh, the, um, the, the the development of this kind of a tragedy um, again um, that we that we witness. Um, so um, it's the first time, if I understand right, is that really true that? a play by Paco Becerra is being shown in the United States. Is that true? Yes, it's the first time. Which is also shocking and shows how isolated we are, especially given the large Spanish population. I think in the Bronx, I think up to 60, 70 percent of audience, of audience, I say, of people living there are speak Spanish. It's the highest, uh, one of the most spoken languages here, but very few plays and next to some theaters who dedicated there are never Spanish subtitles in theaters. So um, such a um, um, it, highly regarded, internationally renowned and celebrated playwright hasn't been done. It's going to be shown this weekend and next weekend um, at Torn Page, a small living room theater, a beautiful space uh, that Tony Torn um, um, keeps up. And um, I tell everybody, go and see this. You sit up close to the two actors, only 20 seats, and um, they have not know how many are left. Um, we heard of some, some people, audience members, crying after the show, people staying, writing letters. Um, so um, it's quite something. Um, I'm asking Emily, do we have Kimberly? Is she there, um, uh, the director? Um, is she joining us? Kimberly, hi there. Tell us a little bit. You put uh, the little pony uh, together. You helped us to organize that event um, for Marion Peter. What what does this play mean to you? You teach. Uh, uh, you're a professor of theater. Also, you're a playwright uh, with Cuban American roots. Um, tell us a little bit. Uh, why do you want to direct this play? Bueno, sí, mi español es muy limitado. Entonces, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak Spanish, uh, English, because uh, no, tem no tenemos mucho tiempo también. So. Um, I uh, this play was translated by our dear colleague Marion Peter Holt. Um, it was his last translation, and it meant so much to him. Uh, it was a very special project that he wanted to translate because he was primarily a translator of Catalan playwrights, but he felt so passionate about this final piece that that he really wanted to bring it to life, and he could identify a lot with with Timmy, the or, or who in the original, Timmy's name is Luismi, I think, the original character is Luismi. So um, I, very much unlike Anton's recent translations, which I also have, um, <laughs> <laughs> Anton is very careful not to change character names in the mm -hmm. translations. Um, and Marion felt it was really critical to uh, to have names that feel like they could be back where the source material was in North Carolina, right? So it's it's da Irene in, in Spanish is a very common name in the U.S. as well, Irene. Um, and uh, Jaime was changed to Daniel. And uh, Luismi is Timmy, which is like a really common kid name in the U.S., and I feel like Marion felt he had so much in, in common, like kind of a kinship, a spiritual identification with the source material, which was Grace and Bruce and Michael Morones, the kids in North Carolina in 2014, who were not allowed to simply e express themselves. Um, uh, Grace and... It, it, yeah, and the, the, that kind of yeah. um, catastrophe, tragedy that develops that is based on a real case um, of a child committing suicide uh, in a school. Um, and um, so we, we are witnessing that, but just through listening to the parents. It's an open ending. Right. We do not... well, it's, it's brilliant how the, uh, in, in 
Bacos writing, how we come to know Timmy through exposition, through the dialogue of the parents, and through a portrait that is, is just the best opportunity for a, a projection designer, a set designer to create these glorious changing portraits of the child throughout. And we feel his presence. We feel like he could be anyone, um, any one of our children or any one of us. It's such a universal character and such a powerful message. I've been teaching this play since Marion passed away. And I, 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 he, before he passed away, he really wanted a US production. It was one of his last wishes. He, he emailed all of us. He said, someone has to do the US premiere of my English translation that they did in London. Um, and it, I, I regret it didn't happen when he was alive, but of course we have the COVID-19 pandemic and um, we are slowly building this uh, from the memorial that we did for Marion, where we did a couple of excerpts of scenes. And then we did a staged reading at the Prelude Festival in the Siegel, uh, you know, with the Siegel Theater Center. And now we're doing a workshop in the salon of um, of Tony Torn, who is the son of Geraldine Page and Rip Torn, two American uh, actors. And we're slowly building this project. Um, Tell us a little bit about, yeah, Marissa uh, and, um, and Montgomery, how did you meet them and um, how did you put them together? I met the actors at another legendary New York house um, of Edwin Booth, the great American actor who, who dedicated in the late part of the 1800s, a house in Gramercy Park to the theatrical community. It is now The Players, which is um, a club for theater uh, patrons and practitioners and, and um, arts enthusiasts. And we are on a committee for equity and diversity and inclusion at the players, the actors and, and I. So we met it kind of united by that passion already of inclusion, representation, and um, you know, fighting for equal rights and freedom of expression. So we, we, when the idea of the memorial excerpts came I had those two actors in mind because I knew their pal their commitments and their passion to this to begin with. Right. Um, let's maybe go for a moment back to Paco. Paco, um, the inspiration of the play, did you read about the kids in Carolina, in, in Carolina who killed, tried to commit suicide or did? Um, how, how did it start? Was it already in your mind, the play, and you looked for a request? How did the idea start? Of the yeah. little pony. I read, I, I've read, I've read, no? Mm -hmm. I, I read uh, in a newspaper the, the news uh, about uh, a, 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 a principal of, the, of a school who forbidden uh, a child who is in the school uh, to go enter the school with the, with the backpack of my little pony. Is, is, is the only is the is the only thing that i read because the the news uh, that are not too 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 long it's only the principal of a school uh forbid no forbidden forbid mm -hmm. forbid forbid a, a child who is in in the school to enter at the school if the child uh, go with a backpack with a backpack uh, of my little pony and I uh, uh, and I was thinking about this uh, this uh, uh, immediately immediately I thought that um, there are a, a good play there uh, because I became to thinking what what can be happen behind this law. Of the principal, and all the play, I think, is all my thinkings about the how a principal can, how and why a principal of a school uh, can or or want, why he want to 
forbid this thing and and how this law uh, go to the parents house of the children and what happened in the house uh, and, and uh, i became to uh, i became to to great and i was uh, one year and a half i think writing the the play i wrote the play in one year and six months more or less and as we now know in hundreds of um drafts um incredible so is this um i want to repeat it if i understood it right in of worldwide this is one of the top 20 plays performed on stages you said uh, this is the number 20 in the world uh, you say production your production is the number 20 20 20 uh, or in the world the, in the world yes is the 20 but in countries i don't know if it is or, or is 20 yes it's tw tw no 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 there are not 20 countries because uh, in greece for example there are four productions of little pony and in poland there are three productions is the number 20 uh, how do you say 20th 20, 20 production uh, number 20 to and production, production number 20 mm -hmm. in the world but uh, but uh but i think is the maybe the i don't know <laughs> uh, i don't know the number of the of the country but 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 it is the 20 the 20 production the production number 20 yeah no really it's a an exceptional play so well written so well composed asking the question we witness the, the these two um the parents those two the yeah, i th i thought in the ausen el person pensé en el personaje ausente también como pepe you romano the la... absent character como pepe el romano en la casa de bernarda alba like pepe el romano in the house of bernarda alba o pensé también en sebastian en de repente el último de verano de tennessee williams sebastian in suddenly last summer by tennessee williams o en, bueno, pensé que, que de repente me vino, me vino que el, que el chico tenía, o sea, que el protagonista de la obra tenía que ser el, 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 el personaje ausente por el cual se movió. Me que el niño tenía que ser el personaje ausente en el play. Y se me ocurrió también la idea de poner ese cuadro, como ha comentado uh, Kimi. De poner esa painting. Mm, que también tenía que ver un poco como con el retrato de, de Dorian Gray, ¿no? De Oscar Wilde. But... Has Dorian Gray's reminiscences. Mm -hmm. Es muy gracioso porque en algunos países no se han leído la obra y felicitan al escenógrafo diciendo gran idea del escenógrafo que ha que ha puesto al personaje ausente en un como que si fuese una idea de, de esa producción solo que se le ha ocurrido en tal, en un país determinado. In some countries, um, the critics have not read the play and they think that that's been part of the el director, the the directors. Ah. Putting like that it's an idea original de la puesta en escena it's a or, or, original idea from the from the, the staging from the staging <laughs> amazing kimmy tell us a little bit we're coming slowly to the end uh, but how did you decide to stage it what did you struggle with what was easy what was complicated the the portrait was uh, was easy i mean uh becerra's stage directions are so meticulous and and they're expertly translated by marion and we we really followed them to the letter and we have a gorgeous projection design that really grounds the actors the day that i brought the projection design we found something like it just uh we were rehearsing i think in uh in Frank Hensinger's living room at the time. And I brought the projection design and, and it, immediately something clicked for us. We could feel the narrative just uh, exploding. And it was, it was, it's brilliant. And yeah, the it's small projection, it's maybe like mm -hmm. 20 inches times 40 inches, really you know, it's tiny. almost like an oil painting, a living one. Um, yeah, so uh, tell us about the work with the actors and the words, what lines were, what was complicated, what did you? It's been a really natural process. I can't really say that um, that anything, I think the most challenging thing has been for the actors to transform into these characters, especially the performer playing Irene is nothing like Irene. Um, you know, none of us feel... Uh, it, it, our, our, we're a collective of creative people who who are not gender conforming, 
And the actor playing Irene so deeply understands Timmy and not so much Irene, but they can get there through the process. In rehearsals, we did some improvisation for the offstage character because it's so brilliant that we don't know Timmy, that we don't see him, that we only hear him sound design and the portrait. Um, but we did some improvisations where the actor, Marissa, who plays Irene, played Timmy in rehearsal. And we had some of those conversations between Daniel and Timmy um, about uh, whether or not to take the backpack to school, to take the Batman backpack. We, we improvise those off-stage scenes that are referred to only expositorily. And I think that really deeply informed our, our process here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. We had like one uh, weekend um, opening, but you know, it is uh, something, you know, what we always try to do to introduce plays that are overlooked uh, that uh, for, for the wrong reasons. Um, and we do not hear enough uh, voices from around the world. Musicians listen to <clears throat> world music. It's vitally important to them. And often I think uh, the US is, it's an island. It's a gigantic big island in a way, but it is an island. And we do not listen enough to the voices uh, from the world around of us also to realize that the big problems that we are facing, whether it's climate change, uh, homophobia, violence, violence against women, they are planetary problems. They're global problems. And I think um, this place is a good reminder of, of the universality um, of this, and um, I think it's deeply uh, touching, and um, and um, so congratulations, you know, Paco, for uh, uh, writing um, this work that is now being shown here. Will you come and see it? Will you fly over? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. We hope. Maybe another time. Maybe someone will pick it up um, and um, to, to the and, next um, stage. in the next stage. So anybody who might be interested, you know, come um, and see it. So Paco, at the very end, what are you working on at the moment? What's your on draft 78 of what new play are you? What are you thinking about at the moment? Or is it film? I'm working in a film, but I am working uh, from the last 15 years in a, in, sorry, in a new play in a new play that uh, I start to write uh, 15 years ago <laughs> and uh, I am still writing. What uh, is it about? Uh, it's difficult for me it's, and it, it, the reason is because I, I, it's hard and I, I spend a lot of years writing this because it's very ambitious. And uh, I think my mind from uh, 15 years ago can is not uh, is not um, is not prepared. No, it's not. No, está preparada. It's not uh, ready. Como? It's not ready. It's not ready. My mind from 15 years ago, there are no ready. That 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 uh, was not ready for for yes. great. Uh, what is in my imagination, and I think I am. Lo estoy consiguiendo. How do you say? He's getting through it. Yes, he's getting through it. It's a man who returns, uh, to his village, and. Es un hombre que regresa a su pueblo 20 años después de que se fuese o 30 años. No sé muy bien. Returns to his town 20 years after he left. Y cuando regresa, eh, descubre que todo el mundo lo trata como si nunca se hubiese ido de allí. And everybody treats him on, upon his return like he had never left. Everybody's treating him like he had never left. Entonces empieza a plantearse si hay alguien que le ha suplantado la identidad en ese pueblo cuando él se And fue. And he starts thinking if somebody has taken his identity. Pero no, nadie le ha suplantado la identidad. Es él que se quedó. But he... But no, nobody stole his identity. He really stayed. Bueno, no es él porque él se fue. But it's not really him. Pero hubo una parte de él que se quedó ahí. But there was a part of him that stayed behind. Y esa parte de él siguió viviendo en ese pueblo. And this little part of him kept living in the town. Y ahora cuando él quiere volver a la otra vida. And now when he wants to go back to the other life. Ya no puede. He cannot. 
está atrapado en la vida que dejó. O ahora está obligado a vivir... Trapped in the life that he left behind. Está obligado a vivir la vida que hubiese llevado si nunca se hubiese ido del pueblo. So, um, he has to live the life that he would have lived if he had never left. If he had never left. Amazing. Well, let it, for sure, this is a Ulysses uh, a scope of um, um, a character. Um, what are you working on, Anton? Are you translating at the moment? No, um, I have a translation uh, commission, but uh, I don't think I will take it, you uh -huh. know. I think I'm going to relax for a while. No Fantastic. more. Well, so, you know, thank you. Thank you both um, for sharing and thank you for um, being here. And um, and I also wanted to mention the name of the actors, you know, uh, Montgomery Sutton, uh, Marisa Kavarmi, Teresa Soroka um, was assisting in the direction and also is the stage manager of that show, which turns out to be the very, very first workshop production or production of a Paco Bizzera play here in the U.S. and The Little Pony, I think, given the political climate in the U.S., also especially in Florida, where you cannot even say the word gay in, cl in classrooms or many other things, you know, though this is a also putting the finger on a place where it already hurts and... Um, so um, thank you both. And thanks for HowlRound uh, for hosting us. Emily, for being such a good host. Vijay, everybody. And I hope to see you soon again at some Siegel Talks to our audience members. Thank you for taking out the time of your life um, to listen to this. And um, and I um, hope to see you one day all in life at the Siegel Theater Center. Thank you. <laughs>